Henrik Fisker is nothing if not determined. A respected auto designer behind some much-loved and popular cars, he nearly 20 years ago turned his attention toward making EVs. And the rest is history, but not always a happy one. For over a year, the committee has been examining DOE's loan to Fisker and the facts that emerged are deeply troubling. But he is back with a new plan make cheaper EVs. However, his new venture is, once again, facing obstacles. I would not be the least bit shocked if Fisker is bankrupt before the end of 2024. In its earnings release for the fourth quarter of 2023, Fisker said there is substantial doubt about its ability to continue as a going concern. A quick glance of the headlines over the last several months paints a troubling picture of Fisker, the American EV company founded in 2016. Its share price plummeted in late 2023, and as of February 22nd, was still trading below a dollar. That put it in danger of being delisted by the New York Stock Exchange. We are right in this sort of negative sentiment of high interest rates, which probably will be dampening somewhat the outlook. And all that means that you're seeing a stock price falling for all the EV companies. And it doesn't necessarily reflect the value of the company. And I think some analysts and investors have a hard time to see who actually is going to be the winners. The U.S. regulator, known as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, has two open probes into the company. One for unintended movement or rollaway risk, another for brake failure. In a comment to CNBC, a Fisker representative said they have made some system and software updates and are fully cooperating with NHTSA. Its first and only production vehicle, the Ocean, has received some tough reviews from prominent outlets. The Pair, a small crossover, was supposed to begin production in 2024, but has now been delayed until 2025. At the same time, it's having trouble getting its current model into the hands of buyers. It had $530 million in inventory at the end of the fourth quarter 2023, and its end-of-year production total far outpaced deliveries. Typically, production and delivery numbers for mature automakers are close to parity. For example, in 2022, VW Group sales were nearly 98% of production. Of course, in the fourth quarter of 2017, when Tesla was ramping up the Model 3, deliveries of that sedan were only about 63% of production. We had people, you know, all over the US, all over Europe, and they just even couldn't get to us to try the car because we only had two facilities, really. We had one in Los Angeles, one in New York. The company had about 45,000 reservations as of this interview, and it was in the process of filling about 2,500 orders. The Ocean is what Fisker hopes will propel it towards its founder's other ambitious plans. Three more vehicles by the end of 2026. The Pair, the Alaska, its entrant into the lucrative but competitive U.S. pickup truck market, and the Ronin, its supercar. The Ocean is currently made at a factory in Graz, Austria, owned by the $36 billion Canadian supplier Magna International. Magna Steyr manufactures several other models and lines, such as the Mercedes G-Class and BMW 5 Series. We didn't have to spend billions of dollars building a factory, and we also didn't have to spend a long time teaching people how to make a car. So we get a high-quality car from the get-go. Fisker made money on the first vehicles it sold. The trouble is, importing the ocean into the U.S. means the car isn't fully eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit. We are actually eligible if we lease the car. We already priced our car to be competitive, not actually factoring in any incentives, because I don't think you can base a business model on potential incentives from politicians, because that could change. But we are planning eventually to manufacture here in the U.S. In 2022, the company confirmed it was collaborating with Taiwanese Apple iPhone manufacturer Foxconn on production of the pair in a U.S.-based factory. It's unclear whether that is still on track. That's the plan to build a pair in the States. Okay, is that Foxconn who you're talking to? We are talking to several uh, partners, but we haven't made a final decision yet. The relationship with, with Foxconn that was supposed to yield the, the Fisker pair seems to be on the rocks. Uh, or at least that was the impression I got the last time I spoke to Henrik uh, about a month ago. There are no suitable contract manufacturers 
based in North America that could build that for them. That spells further trouble for the Alaska, Fisker's pickup truck. If it can't be made in the U.S., it will face the additional 25% duty the U.S. places on all imported pickup trucks, known as the chicken tax. There are also some personnel and governance concerns among some investors. Fisker is a family business. Henrik started the company with his wife, who is the CFO and COO. It's best practice not to bring family members into an organization in management or I mean, probably any level. That's a, that's a minor issue in, in the grand scheme of things. A non-minor issue is the turnover of senior executives. Fisker is on its third chief accounting officer since late 2023. The instability has contributed to the company's stock price freefall. Shares have fallen from an all-time high of $28.50 in February 2021 to $0.54 in February 2024. At one time, this company was worth multi-billions upon billions of dollars, and now it's just kind of just struggling to survive. To many observers, this story sounds worryingly familiar. Henrik Fisker began his career as a designer. So when did you know you wanted to design cars? And I think I must have been seven, seven, eight years old because I was sitting in the back of my father's Saab 96, which is a very old model, in the back seat. And I saw this Maserati passing. And I just remember seeing it looked like a spaceship and I thought, I want to work with cars. Among the cars he designed was the BMW Z8, which many may know from the James Bond film. He also designed the Aston Martin DB9 and the Aston Martin Vantage. I think he's still today the best-selling Aston Martin of all time. He had a genuinely distinguished career as an automotive designer. But his decision to found Fisker Automotive in 2007 was the start of what some have called a long, sad story, a cautionary case study, or simply a debacle. He's a great designer. I remain unconvinced that he's a great CEO. By 2013, Fisker had secured more than $1 billion from investors, including famed Silicon Valley venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins. It also got a nearly $200 million loan from the Department of Energy, part of a larger planned $528 million package. That would later make the Fisker name fodder for the ridicule of Silicon Valley and ammunition for political opponents of government funding for green companies. Fisker's first car, the Karma, was a plug-in hybrid. The starting price? $102,000. The aim of that car was really to create the world's most sustainable car at that time. And I think we were the first to use reclaimed wood from the California fires. We had a vegan interior, which nobody understood what that meant at that time. And it was really an electric vehicle with a range extender, which we today call a plug-in hybrid. It also had the solar roof at the time. The first car was bought by Leonardo DiCaprio. And the vehicle actually got pretty good reviews. It was very good looking, which all Fisker's uh, vehicles typically are as a designer. But it was plagued by production delays and the sorts of troubles that can affect cars from young startups. The Karma actually broke down in the middle of a Consumer Reports test drive, earning it a failing grade from the widely watched group. The car never made it to large scale production. Meanwhile, Fisker Automotive suffered a saga of financial troubles that culminated in the freezing and partial clawback of the government loan, bankruptcy, mass layoffs and an ensuing lawsuit, congressional hearings, and ultimately the sale of the company's assets to a Chinese firm. That company continues to release cars under the Karma name. Henrik Fisker says he left the company before the reported layoffs and bankruptcy. Fisker blamed the company's failure on the bankruptcy and collapse of a US-based battery supplier. In 2016, he formed VLF Automotive with former GM executive Bob Lutz and Gilbert Villarreal, an industry veteran. Later that year, Henrik Fisker mounted a comeback with a new company that had a nearly identical name and nearly identical logo. Fisker's first new vehicle, the Punny E-Motion, was unveiled at CES in 2018. As of 2023, the car has never made it to production. Instead, Fisker later made the Ocean, a mid-size SUV with a starting price of just under $40,000. Some have said Fisker's first venture suffered in part because it was ahead of its time. Unfortunately, the current Fisker has suffered poor timing too, but of a different kind. 
Mounting a comeback in the middle of a global pandemic proved difficult. Tesla came along and they were in the fortunate position of zero interest rate environment. Um, they were able to raise huge sums of capital and not have to take on any huge amounts of debt, you know, still losing billions of dollars a year. Unfortunately for Henrik Fisker, by the time, you know, they got into starting production of the Fisker Ocean, that environment had completely changed. Fisker's use of contract manufacturing and a heavy reliance on suppliers is almost the opposite of Tesla's hard lean toward vertical integration. And while the approach does have the advantages of relying on outside expertise and saving capital on the front end, it does come with drawbacks. We would rather go with contract manufacturing because we can do much faster growth. But manufacturing for us as a startup has not been an issue at this point in time. With Fisker's approach, you have a lot less control over the quality of the parts. And this is not a problem unique to, to Fisker. If suppliers have decades long relationships with established automakers that are selling in huge volumes, and you've got startups that are selling in relatively small volumes that you're not even sure you're gonna be able to get paid by them. As with Fisker's six-figure karma, he calls the Ocean the world's most sustainable car. The Ocean has a maximum range of 360 miles, which Fisker says is a segment best. The top trim comes with a solar panel on the roof that adds as much as about 2,000 miles of range per year if you park it outside in a very sunny place. To solve its delivery troubles and reduce its mounting inventory, Fisker is revamping its entire distribution network, going from a Tesla-style direct sales model in the U.S. to a dealer model. Fisker signed several dealer partners in the U.S. as of February 28th and said it expected to add more within weeks. Over 250 dealers in North America and Europe have expressed interest in selling the cars. What it allows us to do is to get you know, our vehicles out to these dealers where people can go around the corner where they live and test drive the car and buy the car, get the car serviced. So that, we believe, is really changing our bottleneck that we had uh, in 2023. Fisker has burned a lot of cash already, needless to say, and, you know, ne needs to conserve capital as, as much as possible. Uh, so the, the dealership model, I, I think, is appropriate uh, as a, as a way of uh, managing cash burn. The company is currently carrying more than $1 billion in debt, and so managing the ocean rollout is crucial to getting its next two cars out. We know that this company has uh, struggled with particularly you know, delivery of its vehicles to customers with, with just one model. So will Fisker be able to launch? I think it's appropriate to be skeptical about that. The pair is still more or less on its current schedule, Fisker says. Fisker is trying to share parts across vehicles as much as possible to reduce part inventory and simplify production. The pair also reduced parts overall by 35%, which Fisker says helped bring the price of the vehicle down to $29,000. I would really like to see Fisker succeed because he's got some fascinating ideas. I'm just not sure that Fisker can succeed as an independent company right now in, in this economic environment. The company is also quietly trying out some options beyond making and selling cars. There is an 8K that released a couple weeks ago that like one of your debt holders relaxed some of the terms of their agreement with you around their debt, allowing the company to license how did you find out about this? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we can license quite a lot. Um, you know, for example, right now we are talking to a large German supplier. Uh, they want to license our unique roof spoiler. We also can license our platform. Basically, we have technologies, we have platforms that we could license out or do collaborations on, and that's something that we're exploring. After its shares plummeted in late 2023, Henrik Fisker released a statement saying concerns about the company were overblown. On February 29th, the company announced it would cut 15% of its workforce. According to Reuters, Fisker is in talks to receive a potential investment from Japanese automaker Nissan. The partnership would help with manufacturing, low cash flow, and development delays. Fisker did not confirm. One analyst I talked to, you know, expressed a lot of concern about, you know, how much money you're going through. He said, look, I wouldn't be surprised if Fisker's bankrupt by the end of the year. I, I mean, do you get a lot of questions like this? I mean, how much you respond to you it? Look, you, you have to deal with that, right? Because we're in a very difficult uh, sector. We are not going through as much money as, you know, uh, companies that are building their own factories are having 
thousands of people you know, on their payroll. No, I don't share uh, that we are going bankrupt in the end of the year. Un unfortunately, I will tell him that. Uh, I don't know who it is, but those predictions are sort of easy to make. And then when it doesn't happen, suddenly they disappear and we don't hear about those false predictions. But hey, it's life. We have to deal with it. We are a public company.